Mayor Williams? Here. Council President Lake here. Mr. Swartz? Here. Mr. Shepard? Mr. Von der Haar? Ms. Longenecker? Here. Ms. Snyder? Here. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is the approval of the prior meeting's minutes, and that was on April 3rd. Uh, those were distributed to you in advance. Are there any changes or corrections? And if not, if someone would like to move their adoption. I'll move. Thank you. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, very good. Next item is the report of our financial supervisors from the Ohio Auditor State's Office. You were mailed information um, prior to the meeting, and now we'll be covering that. So I'll give it to April and Anna Mary. Okay, before we get into the financial report stuff, I'm going to address the first two topics under financial supervisor. The status of the report on accounting methods report. And if you'll recall at our last meeting, I indicated we wouldn't be starting that until the 1st of June um, due to the uh, May 31st deadline for the city uh, completing their financial report. So the city did complete their financial report that's required by law to be filed by May 31st. If it is not um, on the auditor's website, it will be posted to the auditor's website. Um, in the interim, if you would like a copy of that uh, report, I can get that and email it to each of you. Um, so now that is done. So we have started working on the report on accounting methods. Um, that's pretty much the only update I can give to you on that. I'll have a better update for you as far as timing, probably at our next commission meeting. Um, but we will not discuss in this, in this setting um, what we are encountering as far as our comments in that report until that report is released. That's proper procedure in our office that we don't discuss a report until it's released. Um, so again, at the next meeting, I'll have a better update, but we are, we have several staff working on that report now. Um, as far as the dispatch center, I'm going to defer that conversation to the mayor um, when it gets to the report of the mayor and the retirees health care. I'm going to defer to uh, Donna Lake's president council when it is and with that, I'm going to give it to Anna Mary. She can talk about the financial reports um, that were emailed to you in the packet. Uh, so in front of you, you have A, B, C, and D. Uh, we will start with A, which is the statement of cash position. Uh, two funds I would like to point out is the general fund, which is 01. It has a uh, ending balance at the end of May of a positive $100,000. Uh, that won't stay positive throughout the year, uh, but due to timing of uh, receipts and expenditures, it is positive at the end of May. Uh, the other Excuse fund... Excuse me. The general ahead. fund? Yeah. Okay. You have to look at the unexpended balance, not the unencumbered balance. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. Uh... The other fund to point out is Fund 50, Water, which is on that first page at the bottom. It has negative as of right now. We are watching this, uh, and there's been some analysis done over this fund. Uh, they also have increased water rates within the city as of the 1st of May as well. So um, there's some timing issues with when bills are due for that and when receipts come in. So um, Which number fund was that? 50, the 50. Water Fund Thank you. at the bottom. The other funds were positive, and on the second page you can see where their unexpected balance was, um, their unexpended balance was at the end of May over $9 million. That's A. B is the uh, next one, which is the revenues. It's a one page uh, report. Uh, we're only looking at three funds right now, uh, the first one being the general fund. Uh, again, this is through the end of May, so the normal target of that uh, 5 out of 12 months would be 41.67%. We're looking to make sure they've hit that or above. Above would be better uh, at this time. The general fund overall is at 47.56%, which is above the target uh, for May. Uh, as you can look, property taxes is over 50% collected, which would be normal. Uh, you have way more collections in the first half than you do the second because uh, a lot of people will pay their entire tax bill uh, up front uh, and then there's still some who pay the first half and then the second half. So we won't see the second half until about August or September. 
Uh, municipal income tax, as of right now, uh, it's a little over target. Uh, that's one we'll be watching as we go through the year. Uh, it's at 43.33%. Uh, intergovernmental is at 75% collection. And the reason it's so high is they uh, received the SAFER grant, which is the fire reimbursement grant, which we talked about at the last meeting. It was over $400,000, which was in the recovery plan. Uh, so that jumps up the percentage for it. Excuse me, is yes. this actual 2018? Yes, this is 17. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it says 17, yeah. At the top it says 18. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Fees, licenses, and permits, uh, that's over what we <coughs> expected. Uh, the big reason for that is the building permits are uh, collected in this line item, and it's already uh, close to double what it was last year. Now, last year, if you remember, we talked about it, it was actually down. Um, this is for uh, building permits to build, add on, whatever in the city. So right now, that's above what we projected. Um, charges for services, I'm just pointing it out because it looks a little low. <coughs> The biggest one in there is EMS. Uh, it's close to where it should be for May. Uh, but the other big things in here are recreation uh, fees and charges for uh, sports and stuff. We're going to see a lot more of that come in during the summer months with the swimming pool and other things going on within the city for the recreation. So that's why it's a little low right now. But again, overall, we're above target at 47%. Do you know where that was last year at this time? Um, Quick question, yes. were the building permits, was the amount or the uh, fee raised? Is that why they're raised? No, there's just been more permits uh, okay. throughout the city as far as I can tell. There's some discussion about looking at those rates, but right now um, they have not been raised. Um, the building commissioner did suggest that we look at that um, because they're considerably lower than they are in Cincinnati. Okay, the next two funds are our two street funds, uh, the st street construction and repair and state highway. As you can tell, those are both above um, where they were projected at this time. Um, the street construction had fines, licenses, and permits. This was for street openings. Uh, that is not something we normally uh, project because it is. you may have some during the year, you may not. That's more like, example, be a company like Duke needs to come in and cut into the right of way of the city on the roads, and they have to pay for that. Uh, and th those were the monies that were received there. Any questions over the revenues? I had a thought on the property taxes. When we did the recovery plan, we didn't have an update on that estimate. Is this a line now with the latest information? Or if, have we got the latest information? The only, where you want to take it? The only information that we have, they, the county still didn't provide like an estimate for the year. So okay. all we've got is the settlement. And there are some variances. Anna Mary will talk about it when she gets to the expense side because what you see here is the gross property tax number before they take fees and that type of stuff out. Okay. Anything else on revenues? Okay. So C is the expenditures, which would be the next one that I'm going to go over. Again, it will be the three funds that we just went over for the uh, revenues. The first one being the general fund. Uh, so I'm going to do a couple overall things first. Uh, our target again is 41.6%. Uh, we want that either at that target or below. Uh, payroll, there's been 11 pays out of 26 paid, which is around 42.3% of payroll. So if I have a percentage and it says exceeds and it's around the 42.3%, I'm really not going to discuss that because it's probably a payroll issue unless I bring something up. Uh, as I go through this, I'm really hitting the ones that have, say exceeds. Uh, if you have questions about others, uh, I can either uh, research that or if I know something, uh, I can explain that. So page one of eight that we're going to go over. Uh, the mayor's department is a prime example of one of those. Uh, it's at 41.9, but I'm saying it's still within it at okay range because of the payroll being at 42.3% target. Uh, so if we see ones like that, I'm not going to go over it. Okay, same page, law department. Uh, it's at 49.59%. 
Uh, there's going to be a, a, a payroll correction, which actually has already happened in June. Uh, an employee there will be paid a percentage out of another department, and that correction you'll see the next time we come back. Um, the auditor's office, they had a one-time payment for annual maintenance. Uh, so with that large expenditure that's causing this 42.3% to look like it exceeds, but it's a one-time deal. Page 208. I am going to talk about the two treasurer's department uh, keys, the treasurer's department and earnings tax. They are not exceeds, uh, but just to let you know, the treasurer's department had an open position up until the 1st of June. They just filled that. The recovery plan had it filled in before that. Uh, so this line should uh, be below when we talk about expenditures. The earnings tax department also had an open position, which wasn't filled until later, which is the 1st of May. Uh, so those expenditures will also be lower for payroll for them. The service director's office department, uh, it's the contractual side. Uh, they had one-time dues and subscriptions that were paid in the first part of the year as one-time payments. So that's making it look like they've exceed, but they're still within their constraints of the recovery plan. Uh, the building department is still within what they need to be. Page 3 of 8, you'll see the fire department is at 47.08%. Uh, payrolls is uh, slightly over where they need to be right now, and we've been talking with that department. Uh, contractual services is at 95% spent. We have already had the fire chief come in and we've uh, addressed some of these concerns with him uh, as well as the city. Street section, which is new as of last year, this is part of the recovery plan that was approved to move the street lighting expenses out of the street and state highway funds to the general fund. Uh, right now it is exceeding. This is an area that we are still researching to determine what's going on with rates and other items that's being paid out of here. So I will have a follow-up at the next meeting on that. The city garage department, uh, there is clothing allowance within their union contract and that has been paid during the first part of the year. That's a one-time payment so that's bumping up the expenditures uh, and that'll I'll fall in line later on. Uh, the next two are still within the 42% with the payroll. Parks and playgrounds at the bottom. Uh, this is only materials and supplies. Uh, it's at 97% expended and this is one that we're watching as well. As well as the city. Page 4 of 8. The Health Administration Department. Um, they had some large payments on refunds in the first part of the year. That's why that's at 45 percent. Uh, the next two really kind of go together, which is health medical and health environment. Um, we moved in the recovery plan. There were four employees under medical services and two of them should be there and two under environmental. Those have been moved. Uh, the first three pays of the year, they hadn't been adjusted. Those have been adjusted in June. So really there's three pays of two people of expenditures that will come down under environmental so then they will be more in line. All right now at the bottom this is kind of where April was kind of talking about the property taxes. The DREETAC non-department expense. This is an expense that is on their property tax settlements. Um, property taxes is required to be shown at gross amount. The county also has expenditures for handling the process of the taxes for any municipal school, anybody that's a government within their county. Um, the DREA tax was way more than it has been in the past. Uh, they have had some increase in delinquencies that they have collected upon and therefore that cost them in expenditure charges by the county. So that's why it's up and above what was expected. The workers' compensation there is not really for workers' comp. It's really for legal under workers' compensation. We are looking into that. We may move those expenditures under um, litigation. That hasn't happened yet. Page 5. I don't really have anything. Page 6. Other than it was a bad break. Uh, page 6 of 8. The first two, again, are uh, expenditures that come off the property tax settlements. 
The first one is county uh, treasurer and auditor fees. Um, those are a little high, uh, but we only have one more settlement. Uh, and again, we, we uh, get 50%, 50, over 50% 50 of the collections in the first half and less in the second. The election expense was a little more than expected. They should not have this uh, in the, the next settlement because the, uh, this would have been for your November elections in 17, the expenses for those. Outside legal fees, uh, this is an area we're watching. Uh, they have uh, ongoing union uh, contract negotiations going through. Uh, the contracts in place for uh, police and fire were opened back up under a clause within the contracts for 2018. Uh, and then we also, they will see the opening of the um, talks and negotiations for the next contracts that will start for 2019. Those have not started yet. The insurance department, non-department expenditures are at 99% uh, percent. Those are one-time payments in the first part of the year. They will not have any more payments out of that line. So basically what they've spent there is, is all they're going to do for the year. The debt service uh, is also shows exceeds, but they had principal and interest, uh, interest payments in the first part of the year they only have their second interest payments to be paid out of there in the second part and what is there we've double checked to make sure that what we the recovery plan has is what they'll need for the rest of the year for payments so they're following the amortization schedules basically okay that's all of the general fund is there questions on the general fund the uh, random drug testing fund looks like it's way under is there anything driving that so I can tell you that um, the public works people have CDL licenses and at least in the past I'm assuming that it's the same way um, the city when I was at the health department the city contracts with um, Cincinnati um, public employees uh, the PEAT program public employees assistance program they the city of Cincinnati or the city of Norwood is in a, a pool with other smaller communities who need to do testing and they do random selections and so it's luck of the draw they may we may only get one or two people um, one quarter and then the next quarter we may get four or five we just okay. never know it's they're all in one big pool and it's literally the luck of the draw thanks the last page are the uh, street and state highway. The street is in line. The state highway we're looking at, I believe we've got some expenditures that we can that need to be moved out of there based on what we did with the recovery plan. This is an item that our office is working with the city on. Any questions on expenditures? Okay, the last one that I have is the bank reconciliation with a little D on it. Uh, basically, it has the bank balances for uh, the end of May, uh, deposits and transits, outstanding checks, any deposits received, not posted, chargebacks. We do still have a reconciling item that's being researched, which is around 10,007, which I believe is less than what it was the last time we were here. Is that chargeback and fees not posted? Is that a new item for this month? We've had it before, so no. But I mean, is that amount new or is it? Well, yeah. So all the uh, all of these are updated. So the deposit and transit would be new. Outstanding checks, uh, the chargebacks and fees not posted. So that would just be at the end of the month, and then they're posted by the next month. It's a timing issue. Okay. So we have some amount there every month. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We'll go to the agenda item for the report of mayor. Uh, Donna's going to talk about the uh, retirees' health. I, the only thing issue that I can tell you that we're is the dispatch center. We continue to look in our options, and we are in discussions with a lot of people over it. We made a brief presentation to the um, to the council, and and from this point on. Uh, there, there's a lot of discussions that we just don't want out in the public domain at this point in time so I think what we're going to come down to do is we're going to have 
uh, Lieutenant Rankin, who is in charge of the comm center, um, have discussions with uh, uh, James Bonzel, the chairman of the finance committee, to keep him updated. Uh, and, and so the progress that we're made. But a lot of discussions are going on. It, it would only hinder it or cause us additional problems if it was discussed openly. There's nothing nefarious about it. It's just uh, we, we continue to explore all the options. I personally, I still stand by it. It's a personal feeling, and I know the numbers will count. And I also believe the service will count. Uh, but we've started this, and we've looked into it, and whatever direction the facts take us, that's what it'll take us. But uh, after discussing this morning with the finance chairman and uh, Lieutenant Rankin, that, that they, you know, that they will start communicating back and forth, and and that's the way we'll keep council updated. And when we come to a final plan, we'll bring it to council and to this commission. Is that likely within? The next few months. It, it's it's really hard to say. I'd like it to be within the next few months, but there's a lot at stake here. Uh, so there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that uh, trying to understand all the technical aspects of it, plus the cost aspect of it, is uh, uh, it takes some in-depth work. The issue that we'll be facing, and a lot of people will be facing, is that what appears to be a really good deal sometimes is always not you know so we're, uh, we're we're looking at it totally from top to bottom and have been and we'll continue to look into it yeah just ask what necessitated having to look into this was it totally about cost well the every time there's a financial problem in the city they they say well we're going to get rid of the 911 and at face value, face value, it seems like a good idea, when in fact it's probably not. And so in order, as far as I'm concerned, in order to keep that, you have to look at two things. You have to look at service. You have to look at what our needs are. You have to look at, then you look at the cost. And uh, the, the, the problem of information is put out that we'll just eliminate our cost of the 911 center if we go with the county. That's not true. That's absolutely not true. So I think we, we're, we're looking at the service aspect of it, which I think is, is critical in number one. And then we're looking at the cost. Is there a cost difference at this point between the Well, options? you know, preliminary, we don't know. No. And could it go up? Absolutely. Because here's, here's the known fact that we can say without getting in. Nah, better not. I'm just better off just letting that go. <laughs> you tempted me, and I'm, I'm better off just letting it go. Because what you see at the beginning is not always what it turns out to be. That's as about as blunt as I can put it. Okay. To report on the city council president. Um, before we get into retirees' health care plan, a couple things that came up. We did pass the tax budget. Um, and that went was sent down to the county auditor. Um, it was based upon the um, financial recovery plan, so very much in line, reviewed by um, our financial supervisors before it was acted upon. Um, the last meeting was a marathon meeting. <laughs> we had a couple of agenda items that I think affect um, the financial recovery plan, and one was a fact finders report from um, the fire department, which recommended um, some cost of living increases and increase in minimum manpower and so um, after discussion council um, came out of executive session and passed a resolution um, opposing the fact finders report um, it just was financially not able to um, fit in with the financial recovery plan um, particularly with the increase in um, the increase in the minimum manpower we had had some figures that had indicated that if we went from the current number up to that um, the last time that happened, there was over $500,000 in overtime costs, and we just don't have it in the plan. And so um, council did pass a resolution in opposition to the fact finders report. And I guess that will then go mayor to arbitration. Uh, 
again on that point we were exploring every option uh, at our disposal uh, without getting specific we're exploring every option at our disposal uh, to uh, rectify that situation in 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 the direction of financial uh, benefit of the city it's just one of those deals where we just we don't have any choice we're going to go that route we're going to explore every option we've got um, and then in terms of the retirees health care plan we had had two readings and we were on track to have the third reading of both the establishment of the new retirees health care plan and the um, dissolution of the other two as of the end of the year um, there has been ongoing discussion with the company that runs the C9 trust and back payments that are due to retirees I have been in contact with them over the last month or so and have experienced the frustration that others of uh, the retirees and others have experienced over the last several years in trying to assure that the retirees will be paid what is owed currently owed to them and back payments from 16 and 17 as well as 18 um, I asked them for a plan um, how we were how we as a city were going to address those back payments and was told that the vendor uh, that Benovation has a new vendor um, for a new computer system that all of the information that they had received were going to be entered into a database that there was a single person who was schedule or who was overseeing the project to compare what had been paid out to the invoices that they had received and they were coming up with a plan as to let us know exactly how much was back paid um, at the end of that letter he and the gentleman indicated that only 28 people had filed for their c9 trust payments in 2018 and anything i could do to um, encourage people to file that would be appreciated there were several names on that list that I was surprised was not on the list and when I contacted those people they said of course they had filed it so long story short I think there's very there's just um, hesitation among council members that these back payments are are going to be resolved in a timely and professional manner we had hoped that uh, the gentleman would come to the meeting that the last meeting and he was out of town the long and the short of what happened was we initially had the third reading and passed the um, new retirees health care plan when it came to dissolving the other two um, some council members were hesitant to do that while not having a plan in place to assure that the retirees weren't going to get their back payment and so um, they failed to pass um, it was by a vote of four to two there was one gentleman who was missing um, on vacation and was excused but um, there was an emergency clause in it and so while a um, majority of council voted in favor of dissolving that as of December 31st there wasn't enough there weren't enough votes because of the emergency clause then upon old business or unfinished business there was a motion to reconsider passage of the retirees plan because there would be three plans in place in direct opposition to what the financial recovery plan was so all of those ordinances are back on the agenda for this evening and reportedly um, although i have not gotten confirmation from him um, the gentleman from benovation is supposed to be at our meeting tonight to explain how and when um, the amount of back payments that are due to retirees will be figured out and given to the city i've gotten to know the people at benovations very well lately so um, again for the second time I wish I had good news to tell you I, I, the, I mean I think that we are all on the same page I believe that every member of council wants this new retirees health care plan wants to do away with the old one it is we all have the same goal in mind I think we have different ways of getting there I thought that we could pass it in work on the, the payments the payments are due to the retirees no matter what um, I think everyone's intentions are good it's just we have different ways of getting there so hopefully it'll be resolved tonight if and when um, the gentleman from Benovations comes sorry about the long explanation no, but I thought it was helpful. important that you understand exactly what's been going on no, it it's a personal uh, project of mine so it is, is a point Donna's repeated that very well it's like a video replay but I, I, I must say what is is 
above board now I'm a recipient that the problem is not council uh, the, the problem is not the city the problem is renovation you just cannot get information from them employees or the retirees have never been able to get a straight answer from them. they ask they won't get an answer they lose this or they put you Donna called a couple of times and he had to make her point very clear do not put me on hold or don't send me to somebody's voicemail which really threw them off because now that they they don't know what to do and I've had discussions with with April about this the state auditor really can't do anything but it's a debt the way I understand it but in order for it to be a debt the city has to be invoiced am I correct that is correct okay so if they're not invoiced if they don't have the information to provide the city the city cannot fulfill its duty to meet its obligation to to pay the debt that is the issue that's what's a, a tough place for this council to accept Donna is exactly right that council wants to do something everybody knows something has to be done but in order for it to be done correctly and legally renovation has to produce the proper documents so council and, and the city can take their operation so I want to make it clear that you know everybody in the city wants something done and they believe it has to be done it's just getting that third party to fulfill their obligation in order for the process to begin and what's the name of that company Benovation. Benovation. And when I returned the call and said, well, you know, I'd be more than happy to have all these retirees um, file their claims. Apparently, several of them did. One of them hand-delivered it to your office and gave it to the person who's personally in charge of making sure that all these things are paid now. Um, and then another person was told by them, don't file anything for 2017 and 2018 until we can get 2016 cleared up. So my response was, I have less and less confidence that this is going to be handled in a professional and timely manner. So you need to come to council and tell us exactly how this is going to be paid. I, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, like I said, I believe every member of council, I mean, it, every other vote was seven to nothing. Every single member of council wants to have this done. Um, I pointed out, won't it be so easy the next time, next year, when you fill out one page, one paper, you send in, you know, your documentation, you get a check, no bills. We know exactly how much money we'll have to spend. It, it would just be so much simpler for everyone involved. So, like as I said, we all want to. We all want to get there. It's just we have different routes of getting there. So, do, do we know the amount? That's that's outstanding. We have no clue. Okay. We so can't that's put it the information in the plan. That's we're hoping exactly to get what we need. That's people. the idea. Make yeah. make no mistake about that. This is a reduction in 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 medical benefits for the retirees. There's no doubt about that. It's a reduction, and it's been hard enough to get the retirees to say okay, but they have. So now that the city's agreed to it, the the, the renovation is the one that's holding it up. And so to get the retirees to accept this, which they have, it's a reduction. It saves the city a lot of money. Now you got renovation that's messed it up. And I've said to April, can we do anything? Well, no, the state auditors can't do anything. Do we know if they're solvent? Uh, There's an issue of they can't pay it? Well, it's, it's, it's our money. It's, we, they send us a bill and we pay it. They, to, the city, to the city? Yeah, yeah okay. the city pays it. So it's a paperwork issue? Yeah. Right. Okay. They, they get absolutely paperwork okay. they invoice the city and then the city pays it but now when you have uh, one of these pointing in two directions or they can't find the records when you have retirees that have had this and are, and are suspicious of it to begin with and then when you have the the vendor saying i don't know i don't know or they blame the council or they blame the auditor's office and the fact of the matter is when the city's invoiced under April and then when the city's been invoiced, they've paid it. But the city can't pay it if they're not invoiced. Right. Therein lies the issue. Well, hopefully Point everybody kept th their support, their their detail of their claims so that they can get reimbursed. Hopefully. I, you know, if they're like me, I make copies of them before I send them. But hopefully. Right. That would be a shame. I can only testify yeah. to one who sat at a dining room table for a year trying to get paid. And How long have we been doing business with these guys? Uh, 
don't know. 10, 15 years. And uh, see, what I'll be honest with you, when, when the city got in trouble and, and the finances were not there, they were not, honestly, they were not paying the bills. Do you want to pay this or do you want to pay salary? So once again, the city was put in a bad position. So once, <laughs> once the, the bottom fell out and then the state came in and said they had to pay this, and as Donna said, we could take money out of funds that we couldn't before. It, it was on the road to being back, but the idea of doing away with it or cutting it back it n never disappeared. And, and the city was so close, the retirees were so close, even though not of them liked it, but they knew that eventually, and it got really emotional, it, it, it got to the point where it was bad and then you throw in renovation, and it's just like throwing fuel on the fire. It's just, it just takes away their confidence. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, so I don't, I don't know what we we can do. Um, Donna's tried everything, and and there's always this excuse. I mean, it's just. What about the law department? We asked them if we could file a suit, and you, the law director indicated that it would almost have. I mean, we're not harmed it's the retirees that are harmed so they would almost have to file suit it um, wouldn't be on behalf of the retirees or well no he didn't seem to think that there was much that we could do and then he's like you know they may they may fire us they may say we don't want to deal with this anymore and throw everything back at us and say here now you figure it out so yeah. I well, think it's still that, retroactive I mean they have to even if they say we're done with you today they still have to take care of the run out of all those claims that existed before I don't today. think so if you believe them and I think people have um, two years to file claims. So, I mean, we're going to be dealing with them for even a couple of years after we do away with the plan. Um, if Assuming that we adopt the new retirees health care plan, um, folks, the retirees have two years to file some claims. So, Plus the misinformation that was put out, like we paid $26,000 a month or something. That was to underwrite a million dollar claim. And so we weren't paying renovation twenty six thousand dollars a month it was a to underwrite a million dollar claim which was if we had the city if we didn't have it it could but tank the city period so right. there was misinformation put out that we were paying them twenty six thousand dollars a month administration figures and, yeah that's and, that's where i question their solvency and saying you know i've seen this before where companies even though they're not the one paying the bills you don't know what's going on behind the scenes there and when when you have behavior like this and they don't answer calls and they can't give you solid answers who knows what's going on so uh, I, I just have some personal concern just hearing what you have to say that is there another reason we don't know about and that's a good question i i i don't know sure that question will be asked tonight assuming he comes i have not heard that i mean i've never heard of the company but that doesn't mean that they haven't been around forever but yeah. Like I said, everybody in the city, I know councils worked hard on this. I know the auditors, everybody's worked hard on this. There was a lot of fighting going back and forth, but now that we went into this, you know, councils decided to go into this direction and they've got people representing the, the retirees that are saying this is okay. It's not 100%, but this is okay. And then you get this far. Sure. I mean, and then you got two steps this, this group of people who saying, I don't know or let me put you on hold so it's it's a difficult process it's it came so far and it's a shame that an organization like Benovation could basically cause this issue right at the very point where it was going to be concluded right. that's the difficult part where are they located are they national are they regional or are they local I think they're on Reading Road okay. I know somebody just went down to see them and didn't have a lot of success so hmm. I thought they had an office in Indianapolis too well that's, they, they have sure. a billing company they, they, I know somebody who said well whose fault is it well it's a company in in, uh, in Indiana and, and this individual said to him then we don't need you well that didn't go over well so she got put on hold well, and it'll be interesting to see what happens tonight. Council President, like, can I 
clarify, did you say the new retirees plan has been passed or is that still pending? <laughs> well, it was passed, then they moved to reconsider, okay, so and then it was tabled until this evening's meeting. Okay, so all three of those are still tabled. Yes. Okay. Actually, there are five ordinances because one council person asked to have the ordinances doing away with the other, with the old plans um, to be prepared without the emergency clause in it. And then another person asked, another council person asked that they be prepared with the emergency clause in it. So we have five ordinances on the agenda tonight, three of which Thanks hopefully will pass. Okay. The reason for not having the emergency clause is that it would only take four people. Well, it still would take, <laughs> you're still going to have to um, have six people to vote to suspend the rules. But you could, in, in theory, have three meetings and have three separate readings and then have four people pass it without the emergency clause. If then if it gets signed, it takes a while to go into effect. I think 30 days to go into effect. So. Okay. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> should, some, should see the minutes from those that meeting. <laughs> They're much longer than the ones I just prepared for you guys. I'm sure. <laughs> Anything else that no, we covered it. all your council report? <laughs> okay, very good. Um, we need to set a time to meet again, and uh, I'd like possibly to look at our calendars for August 21st. Is there another Tuesday? At Are we moving to Tuesdays? Does Tuesdays? that seem to be in the new... The new well, day versus the Thursday. Well, I don't know. I kind of got on the Tuesdays. Okay. I know. I, I missed can't. the last meeting, so I yeah, don't know. Yeah, we, you know. we moved it. Um, or if that was just better for everybody. Yeah, I know. I think the 23rd, we have another meeting that day um, in another community. So I oh, can't okay. move it to Thursday sure. that month. But So Tuesday the 21st, you said? Yeah, August 21st. Is that okay? Yeah. We'll, we'll aim for that then. Okay. Um, and there's no July meeting because there's not enough probably progress between now and then yeah, to warrant that. I think we, this gives us enough time sure. to continue our monitoring and that we should be able to get some um, good updates at that point yeah. in terms of some of these discussions Sounds good. and actions that are going on. There should be some progress. So. Is that 1130 we're targeting? Yeah. Okay. okay. If with that, if I have a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Thank you, Brad. Second from the mayor. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Post. Okay. We'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone, for your you. attendance and participation.